watching Gravitas and the question we're asking now is the Trump administration disintegrating. In a little over six months in office, Donald Trump has lost key officials, all personal appointments made by the president himself. Crucial appointments remain vacant. And when the Republicans dominate Congress to add to Trump's problems, the Republicans passed a sanctions bill which, if cleared by the Senate, will tie Trump's hands on Russia. So just what is going on? Look at the number of people who have exited his administration in the past few months. White House spokesperson Sean Spicer, who in addition to the jibes of the Washington DC press corps, also had to endure the humiliation of Trump denigrating his media briefings, even to the point of making fun of his ill-fitting suits. I just think it, it was in the best interest uh, of our communications department, of our press organization, uh, to not have too many cooks in the kitchen. I knew what the right thing to do is. I think I have a pretty good compass. Others are Jason Miller, who resigned just a few days after accepting the job of communications director. And then there was Michael Flynn, appointed national security advisor, who quit after misleading officials about communications with Russia. Trump's own deputy chief of staff, Katie Walsh, who quit after failing to clear the health care bill in March. The latest in Donald uh, Trump's, uh, the latest is, in fact, that President Trump is furious. He's hopping mad, we're told, with the man he picked for the attorney general's position, Jeff Sessions. Mind you, this was the man who came out early in support of the Trump campaign and who shares Trump's hard-nosed approach to crime, illegal immigrants and trade deals. So what happened now? Jeff Sessions did the unthinkable and to Trump the unforgivable. He recused himself from overseeing the probe into Russian meddling in the US election campaign. Trump wanted him in that job to shut down the Mueller investigation into Russian meddling. He also wanted Sessions to proactively probe Hillary Clinton's activities, including using private emails for government work. So when Sessions backed down, Trump lost it. In his usual manner, he tweeted his displeasure. Let me quote from that tweet. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has taken a very weak position on Hillary Clinton crimes. Where are emails and DNC server? and intel leakers so why aren't the committee and investigators and of course our beleaguered ag looking into crooked hillary's crimes and russia relations this is the president of the u.s no less sessions is under pressure to quit but is holding out for now others holding key posts in his administration are suffering in silence secretary of state rex tillison is one of them he is reported to have privately indicated that he may not last a year in this job Word is that Tillerson feels abandoned by the White House. He's not being consulted on policy towards Iran. Key positions in his department are being filled, ignoring him, and his department's budget could be cut by a third. The latest is that he's taking time off from his job. From American politics, let's uh, look at what's happening closer home. Bihar, Nitish Kumar, the chief minister of one of India's poorest states, has resigned. The move is seen as a boost for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP, which was once in alliance with Nitish Kumar and has once again, we are told, offered to support his party from outside. Here's a report. और जब तक कोई व्यवस्था नहीं होती है तब तक काम करते रहने को कहा है यह तो एक औपचारिक चीज है और यह एक रूटीन चीज है और यह तो वहां से ही कहा जाएगा मीट नीतीश कुमार चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ बिहार वन ऑफ द पोरेस्ट बट फास्ट डेवलपिंग इंडियन स्टेट्स नीतीश कुमार हैज स्टेप डाउन एंड ही इज द मैन बिहाइंड द रेजिग्नेशन नीतीश कुमार्स डेप्यूटी एंड सन ऑफ पावरफुल बिहार पॉलिटिशियन लालू यादव Tejasvi Yadav has been mired in corruption allegations recently charged by federal agencies but Tejasvi refused to back down or explain his position Vidhan Sabha mein upasthit rehne ki baat hai Nitish Kumar ne to istifa mangai nahi hai aap badhiya se jante honge Over the years Nitish Kumar has carefully crafted an image of pro development politician with zero tolerance on corruption Nitish was able to counter Modi wave in Bihar elections 2 years ago by joining hands with his long-time rival Lalu Yadav. 
and now the same alliance came to haunt Nitish, forcing him to resign. Nitish Kumar is in the middle of the country. And he told him that the Hindu state of the Hindu state of the murder case of the armed sect of the Hindu state of the Hindu state of the Hindu state of the Hindu state of the Hindu state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Nitish. ये गठबंधन न कोई विचारधारा का था न ये गठबंधन कोई समन्वय का था ये तो डर का गठबंधन था भाजपा का डर था उसके कारण बिहार का गवर्नेंस समाप्त हो गया है अब नीतीश जी को तय करना है उन्होंने एक कदम उठाया है For now, Nitish's decision has sent ripples across the political spectrum as he was once considered to be a credible opponent to all-powerful Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now, it's rare if not unheard of to hear someone question Mark Zuckerberg's comprehension skills, but that's exactly what Tesla chief executive and fellow billionaire Elon Musk has done. Musk and Zuckerberg have now entered into a public squabble about artificial intelligence with Musk describing the Facebook CEO's knowledge of the field as quote-unquote limited. Here's what followed. Remember Vicky, the little girl robot of the American science fiction serial Small Wonder? For many of us in the late 1980s, she was perhaps the first introduction to artificial intelligence or AI. <laughs> Cut to 2011, when the British sci-fi series Black Mirror debuted. It was a world removed from small wonder, with its dark satirical themes examining the consequences of new technologies, including the Internet of Things. These are the facts of life today, which is why it comes as a surprise when two of the world's iconic tech leaders lock horns over artificial intelligence. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg have taken potshots at each other on social media. The war of words between the two has become so intense that Musk has accused Zuckerberg of having limited knowledge in matters related to artificial intelligence. Musk in the past has expressed his views on the dangers of robots, warning that it poses fundamental risks to civilizations and the humans could end up second-class citizens in a world dominated by Terminator-style killer robots. But Zuckerberg holds a different opinion, and this came up during a Facebook Live, when he was asked, what are your thoughts on AI and how could it affect the world? And this is how Zuckerberg responded. With AI especially, I am really optimistic, and I think people who are naysayers and try to drum up these doomsday scenarios, I just don't understand it. It's really negative and in some ways, I actually think it's pretty irresponsible. Musk, in response, came up with another one and tweeted it. I've talked to Mark about this. His understanding of the subject is limited. It's not just about trading jabs. The two sharply disagree on whether tougher government regulations are needed for such technologies. One cannot ignore the fact that the AI technology is being widely used in healthcare, entertainment and banking. Investing in artificial intelligence. Companies are actually investing millions of dollars to up the game in the artificial intelligence space. Amazon, Apple and Alphabet are pushing artificially intelligent voice assistants at smart home interfaces. Popular vacuum maker iRobot is betting big on smart homes. And amidst all this, you see two top tech leaders airing their differences on technologies that are expected to revolutionize the way we live in the future. While both have a right to their respective points of view, perhaps they could get together, clarify their doubts, and then address the concerns of the wider audience. Bureau Report, we on. From debates about the future, let's take a moment to dwell on what happened in the past. We are wrapping this edition of Gravitas with a tribute to the soldiers who laid down their lives to fight for this country. Today is Vijay Devas, 18 years since the Kargil War. We're leaving you with these images. Thanks very much for watching.